Hey guys, welcome to my channel Tokyo Foodie Sarah. In this video today, I'm gonna show you things you can do in Sapporo. Sapporo is the largest city in Hokkaido. Google tells you that Sapporo is famous for beer, skiing, and annual snow festival. But if you're like me and you're not a fan of beer, and if you're not going in the winter, this video is definitely for you. Even if you are a beer fan who's visiting in the winter, this video is still for you because Sapporo offers so much more than beer and snow. So make sure you stick till the end of the video. Number one, visit the former Hokkaido government office. Also known as the Red Brick Office, the building was built in 1888 and it has an American neo baroque architecture. Inside the building, you can take a look at the exhibits on Hokkaido history. The building is closed until next year due to reconstruction works, but it's still a nice area to take a stroll around. Number 2. Have a view of the Sapporo TV tower. It looks like another tower. Indeed, it is just another tower. I swear there's a tall tower in the middle of all large cities in Japan, and Sapporo is no exception. It does look very nice at night though, and the park around it looks like a nice area to chill for a date night. Mm -hmm. Number 3. Indulge yourself with a bowl of ramen. Or multiple bowls of ramen. The choice is yours. Sapporo is famous for miso ramen, and this Sapporo Ramen Alley is the place that started the miso ramen trend in Sapporo. It started its operation in 1951, and today there are 17 ramen shops in operation. I came to a ramen place called Misogin, which specializes in miso ramen. I'm so excited for the miso ramen! At Misogin, you can place your order on this machine. I was wondering why they didn't take my money, and realized that I wasn't inserting cash into the right place. Duh. Make sure you insert money at the right place and confirm your order. You can give this ticket to the staff, and they'll start making your ramen. You can spice up your ramen with some chili flakes, black pepper, and or garlic. Hi. My miso ramen has arrived! Mm. Number 4. Visit the Hokkaido University Hokkaido University is one of the seven Japanese national universities. Inside the university, there are quite a few spots that attract tourists. For example, this Ginkgo Avenue. The ginkgo trees become all yellow in the autumn and would present a stunning view. But do you know, when ginkgo nuts fall on the ground and people step on them, the whole area stinks like hell, just an FYI. And then there's the Poplar Avenue. These trees were planted by students and is now one of the most popular tourist sites in Sapporo. Or, oh, Poplar Tourist Site. <laughs> I'm so funny. There are also a few statues of Dr. Clark within the campus. I'll talk about him later on this video. Why not get some drinks from the convenience store and pretend like you're one of their students? Number 5. Take a visit to the Sapporo Clock Tower. The Clock Tower was built in 1878 as a theatrical hall for the Sapporo Agricultural College, which is currently known as Hokkaido University as we've seen earlier. This is the oldest clock tower in Japan. Inside, there's a museum that displays the history of the building and Sapporo. There's also a ceremony hall on the second floor. They ring the bell every hour, so if you're lucky, you may be able to hear the bells. If you go on the second floor of the Tony Romas just opposite to the clock tower, you get an even better view. Number 6. Visit Dr. Clark Dr. William Smith Clark was the man who contributed towards the establishment of Sapporo Agricultural College, currently the Hokkaido University. 
Soon after Dr. Clark arrived at Hokkaido as the university's vice president, he organized the construction of a facility where students could experience agriculture. And also, he was responsible for the construction of the Sapporo Clock Tower. Dr. Clark was in Hokkaido for only eight months. However, he gave so much impact to the development of agriculture in Hokkaido that his farewell phrase to the students, Boys, be ambitious, became so famous. Originally, Dr. Clark's statue was only located within Hokkaido University, and a lot of tourists visited the campus for this statue along with the popular avenue. At one point, the university stopped sightseeing buses from entering the campus because it was annoying the students. However, the Sapporo tourist organizations concerned that tourists weren't able to see one of the most popular tourist sites in Sapporo, so the organization decided to build this statue on top of the Hitsujigaoka Observation Hill. Oof, that was a bit of a history lesson. I hope you guys are still with me. Within the park, there's a museum, a church, and a souvenir shop. <laughs> Number seven, take a day trip to Otaru. Otaru is a city just under an hour away from central Sapporo. The nice relaxing vibe is totally different from the busy streets of Sapporo, so it's great if you're looking for a nice relaxed day in between. If you've been following my other vlogs, you would have probably seen this. Here it says, you can only get the taste here, but we all know that's not true. Otaru is famous for their glass crafts, and you can find a lot of small shops where you can purchase those cute little glass souvenirs. Yes, this glass is indeed only cold. You always need a coffee break, right? I found this antique shop that also serves as a cafe. There are a lot of fragile products inside, so kids are not allowed inside. I ordered the yuzu tea. It was sweet and was a great energy boost. Though I don't know if this person needs even more energy. <laughs> Lutao is a sweet shop that is from Otaru. Their sweets are some of the most popular souvenirs from Hokkaido. I had to try out the Sank Fromage ice cream. I think it means that they have five different kinds of cheese. Yeah. I tried to scoop out the ice cream with a spoon, but it didn't work, so I just decided to bite into it. That is so cheesy and creamy, but fresh at the same time. It literally tastes like cheesecake, but in an ice cream form. On the outside of a seaweed shop, you can find this sign saying, We take care of your dad. You know, mums and children spend ages shopping and a lot of dads end up waiting. But at this seaweed shop, they can provide dads with some seaweed dashi tea. Apparently it's not only limited to dads and anyone can try out the dashi tea. Number 8. Feel like you're not in Japan I have come to Easter Island <laughs> or not. This is the Makomanai Cemetery in Sapporo. As the name suggests, this place is actually a cemetery but they've decided to build some Moai statues and also some Stonehenge as I'll show you later. And they also have a bit of a Buddha head just over there, but they close at 4pm and now it's like 5pm so I won't be able to go inside of that. 
but this is the Moai statue. So there are quite a bit of these statues. There's a few over there and some of them are wearing masks. <laughs> it's so cute. And then on the other side, there's even more statues. Wow, look at that. The Makomanai Takino Cemetery is a large cemetery that is located about 30 to 40 minutes away from central Sapporo. Since this place is a cemetery, please remember to act respectfully. That's the other side of the Moai statues, and I don't know if you can see, but that over there, this thing, is the Buddha's head. And apparently during the spring, it's gonna look nice with all the lavenders around, around like here. What I noticed is that there were quite a few cars around the Moai statues, but no one actually came out of the cars. When I had a look, they were all couples just chilling in the cars. And then soon after, I realized that the sunset here looked amazing. Maybe the couples came here to have a view of the sunset. Just a reminder, again, this place is a cemetery. And this is the Stonehenge area. Do you feel the UK-ness? Apparently you can go around this place, but you're not meant to go inside the Stonehenge. So yeah, I am gonna report to you from here. It's definitely a lot smaller than the actual Stonehenge. The clouds are really nice. Oh, by the way, on my way to the cemetery, I saw these foxes. I think it was my first time seeing foxes in Japan. Last but not least, number nine, spend some time at the new Chitose airport. If you're coming to Sapporo directly from other cities in Japan, you will probably arrive at the new Chitose airport. It's the largest airport in Hokkaido and you can enjoy some local foods here from a variety of restaurants. I decided to go for a bowl of seafood donburi at this restaurant called Ebizen. Here's the big prawn. It's so fresh and it's a lot sweeter than the normal sweet shrimp that I have in Tokyo. Wow. Mm. There's also the Hokkaido Ramen Dojo if you're feeling like ramen. It's really similar to the Sapporo Ramen Alley where they had a lot of different ramen restaurants. There are quite a few souvenir shops too, so you can purchase any last minute souvenirs at the airport. There's the Hello Kitty shop and Roy's chocolate shop. You guys know, my favorite character is Doraemon. The new Chitose airport had a Doraemon shop and they had some limited editions here. That was my Doraemon dance. I got this mini bag for putting makeup products inside and I love it. I'm usually okay with a lot of charactered foods, but I don't think I'll be able to eat that. So guys, I found the Doraemon train game and I had to try it out. I'm gonna only spend 100 yen and give it one try and see if I can get it, okay?
All right, guys, that is it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it the thumbs up and subscribe to see more future videos about Japanese foods and culture and more videos on Hokkaido. Bye! All right, guys, that is it for the video today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to give it the thumbs up. <laughs> it literally tastes like cream cheese. Cream cheese, don't know. <laughs>